Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about um, pipetting small volumes with one of these um, pipettas. And I want to go through a couple of extra things to keep a close eye on, tips, I guess, on how to pipette um, small volumes. If you haven't watched the video on how to use one of these um, pipettas, um, and, and if you're not sure how to use one of these, please make sure you watch that video before um, continuing with this. Okay, so what do I mean by small volumes? Um, by small volumes, I mean anything less than 50 microliters. Okay, a drop of water is approximately 50 microliters, but in the types of um, work you'll be doing in the laboratory, quite often you'll be preparing volumes much smaller than that and assembling reactions with a total volume much less than 50 microliters. So a lot of, so these are things like PCR reactions or sequencing reactions where you're combining polymerase with sequencing primers and with your templates and the volumes you'd be preparing would typically be much less than, than 50 microliters. Okay, so when you're preparing these small volumes, it's just a couple of things that you want to watch out for. So here I've got set up some PCR tubes and uh, a couple of microcentrifuge tubes containing um, some liquid to pipette. Uh, they, they've got dye in them to make them more visible in this video so you can see what I'm doing, but, but typically uh, when you'll be doing um, assembling your PCR reactions or whatever reaction, the, 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 the solution will be colorless, um, much like that. Okay, so here I've got an, uh, a P10 set for two microliters. And I want to show you a couple of things to watch out for when you're pipetting these small volumes. Oh, uh, the reason why we have to be extra careful because there's the potential for um, errors and variances in your pipetting to be magnified when you're pipetting these small volumes. And what I mean by that is when you're pipetting a large volume, like say 500 microliters, if it's out by a microliter or two, um, that's a small variance out of that total volume. And maybe that's something that's fine that you can live with. But if you're pipetting a small volume, um, say five microliters, and then you're out by a microliter, the variance there is um, 20%, right? And that's a, that's a huge margin of error, which you, you don't want to introduce into your reactions. Um, it can make the difference between your PCR reactions working or not, or, or, or working well versus getting very poor um, results. Okay, so when you're preparing um, a small volume, let's say this is set for two microliters, you can see there. Let's um, let's try this blue solution. Um, the 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 taking up of the solution is as per normal. So here I've got it in liquid and here I've taken up two microliters. Now when you take it out of the solution, the first thing to watch out for is that there's not an abundance of liquid stuck to the outside of the tip, okay? Um, because if if there is and you, you deliver, if there is a drop of the solution on the outside of the tip, that can be uh, almost equivalent to the volume that you're trying to pipette. So here you're trying to pipette two microliters, you may end up delivering double or three times that volume if you carry over a drop on the outside of, the t of that tip. So the first thing to watch out for is to make sure there's nothing sticking to the outside of the tip. And if there is just a simple sort of touching it, um, touching it to the wall of the, of the, micro, uh, of the microcentrifuge tube, normally we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of that. Now, the other thing to watch out for when you're delivering the volume is to make sure that um, you make contact with the surface of the inside of the tube that you're delivering it to. So for example, we might be trying to pipette these two microliters into this PCR tube. Um, you want to make sure the, the, the tip actually touches the edge of the wall when you eject the volume to make sure that volume comes out and stays in the tube and not stuck to the outside of, of your tip. Okay, which it will do if you just sort of pipette from um, the top without contacting anything. So I'll do it on this little piece of parafilm so you know what I'm talking about so you can see clearly and then I'll do it into this uh, PCR tube here. So you want to make sure it's touching the surface or whatever it is that you're trying to pipette. Then you eject and then you go to the second stop to get rid of that liquid and you can see that drop contacts whatever it is you're, you're touching and stays there and there's nothing left let me get that in focus. There's nothing left 
in your pipette tip. So you're, you can be quite confident you've accurately delivered that two microliters to the receptacle you're trying to pipette it into. Now, the thing not to do would be to just sort of hover above where it is you're trying to deliver it and then just ejecting but not, uh, uh, but not touching the, the surface of the receptacle you're trying to deliver the volume to. You can see what happens there is that that drop just sticks to the pipette tip. It's just the surface tension of the, of the liquid um, just uh, that keeps it on that pipette tip. Even if you go to the second stop, you can see it, it doesn't actually fall off of the tip because the volume is so small. It's not until you actually touch it to something that that volume is, um, is delivered. Okay, so um, okay, so what does that look like when you're pipetting um, something into a PCR tube? So let's I'll show you that. Get this blue liquid again. Take up a couple of microliters, and we'll pipette it into this PCR tube here. You get that in focus, so you can see that. So you, what you want to do is you get that tip all the way to the bottom of that tube. Um, so in this example, the tube is empty. So you want to make sure it goes all the way to the bottom of that tube. And when you uh, dispense the liquid, then you make sure the drop is touching the edge or the surface of that, that the inside surface of that tube, so that the drop actually sticks to it and is delivered um, um, to the bottom of that PCR tube. Okay. So then if you're mixing two liquids together, let's get some of this red solution here and try and mix this with that blue solution we've just pipetted into that PCR tube. So here you want to make sure your tip actually touches the, the solution that's already in the tube before you dispense and eject. And you can see that the, the, those two solutions have mixed. And what you can also do is you can now pipette up and down like that to mix those two solutions. We've, so there should be four microliters in there fairly accurately. We've added two plus two, okay? And you can see the, the get that in focus, hopefully. Yep, you can see that four microliters at the bottom of that PCR tube, it's not sort of hanging around stuck um, at the top. Um, we've pipetted two solutions here and they're, they're well mixed. Okay, so that's what, um, when you're assembling your PCR reactions um, if with these small volumes, two, five, ten microliters, whatever they may be, just take care, you, just take extra care to do that to make sure you're de delivering an accurate volume and you're mixing uh, the things that you're trying to combine uh, together, whether they be uh, an enzyme or a, or a template or some kind of primer, okay? And if you do that with care, your, your experiments or your PCR reactions uh, should turn out, um, turn out great. As I said, the thing not to do is just to hover over the tube and just eject the volume um, and just trusting that it will fall into the tube, well, you have to make sure you're watching, you, you, you watch what you're doing and you want to make sure and ensure that that liquid actually makes its way into the tube, right? So, so here's an example of a disaster. Um, the, the, the liquid hasn't made its way and mixed in with the other solution. It's stuck at the top of that tube and you can see um, in that tip that there's still volume left over. So, so you, we can't be very confident in this example that you've accurately delivered the volume that you're intending to, okay? So, um, so just pay attention to these couple of uh, tips that I've just given you when you're preparing these uh, small volumes um, and, and you shouldn't have any trouble in, um, in the Pratt class in assembling your PCR reactions.